you could step into a paralegal career with confidence by completing the Paralegal Certificate Program at the University of Texas at Austin. Learn essential skills, torts, contracts, and more in either our instructor-led class or our self-paced program. Attend a free information session on October 26th to learn how our online programs can get you started in this rewarding career. Visit professionaled.utexas.edu. That's professionaled.utexas.edu. The Houston Safari Club Foundation Worldwide Hunting Expo and Convention at the George R. Brown Convention Center. February 4th through the 6th, 2022. Hunting and fishing outfitters from around the world. Gear, firearms, optics, taxidermy, and more. Banquets, auctions, raffles, and entertainment. $10 at the door. Children 12 and under and active military with ID get in free. Proceeds support youth education, scholarships, conservation, and hunters' rights. Sponsored by Gunworks, Forlo, Capital Farm Credit, Wildlife Partners, and Boyd's Hardwood Gunstocks. Go to wehuntwegive.com org to learn more tradition conservation family the outdoors it matters to you it matters to us this is hunting matters presented by houston safari club foundation here's joe bitar good morning welcome back to hunting matters on kprc 950 i'm your host joe bitar i am ramon robles and we are back at the uh uh, world worldwide headquarters of hunting matters yeah. and the houston safari club foundation today july 4th eve i know man i'm excited so how, how many uh, pounds of fireworks do you have stored up well none as far as uh Paraland police know oh yeah they're illegal from what i've been told yeah so the, i have none the first rule of fight club is yeah, that's right <laughs> yep I, ha- I have absolutely zero yeah. One time I went down, actually for New Year's Eve, I went down to Texas City and we bought some because, you know, we're going to pop them off at my parents' house and it'd sure. be them getting the ticket, not me. And so I had the sparklers and the little bottle rockets and I was very apprehensive. Those aren't fireworks. Okay, well, the, yeah. Yeah. I was apprehensive nonetheless sure. until I saw our neighbors with the big $40, yeah. $50 kaboom ones and I thought, okay, we're good. Yeah. So lesson learned go to my mom's house. Well, your kids are young. Mine are grown, so I don't really have the fireworks thing, but I've got about. Uh, I've got about 12 pounds of meat yeah. ready to go on the smoker. So, what kind? What we uh, we're doing, uh, we're going to do burgers, mm-hmm. brisket, and Ooh. sausage this week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I did the giant country style pork chops, pork ribs last week. So, good for you. That's a great thing about summers. It's barbecue, well, anytime's barbecue time, but yeah. My uh, my grill gets a little overtime in on the summer. Good for so. you. And it's a pellet grill, right? It's a pellet grill. Yeah, I respect that. I'm converted. Yep. It, no, I get it. it. I know it's cheating, but, you know, I've done the smoker, traditional smoker stuff and all that thing. But uh, I, I I enjoy the pellet grill because I can get back to the pool and yep. relax and hang out with the wifey. And I respect that. Yeah. I used to knock it, but that was when I had first started and you were earning your stripes. But sure. Once you get it down, yeah. a traditional pit, you are more than welcome to go to the uh, pellet grill. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, folks, don't forget, uh, Houston Safari Club Foundation has got some great stuff coming up in October. We're doing our annual sporting clays tournament to raise money for our scholarship program and our youth education program. And then conventions happen in Ramon February 4th through the 6th of next year. Amen. Down at the George R. Brown, we will be congregating back together again. So we're excited about that. Go to wehuntwegive.org and check out all the cool stuff that Houston Safari Club Foundation is up to. So, you know, Ramon, we started this a couple weeks ago. We started talking about uh, uh, kind of providing some trivia and meaning, mm-hmm. meaningless facts when we first kick off the show. So here's my here's my trivia for today. Okay. What percent of the U.S. population do you think participates in fishing? Just estimate. Uh, Ten. Close. It's 17 percent. Oh, wow. So there's 13 percent of folks that uh, fish in freshwater, about 4 percent do saltwater fishing, and um, surprisingly, that's compared to only about 8 percent of Americans that participate in golf. Which is, uh, hmm. I thought that number was a lot higher. Yeah. I, I don't play golf, but I have a lot of friends who have the time to do it. But uh, for me, I'd rather be fishing and hunting. So, golf um, is a lot harder to get into than I would think fishing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, for a variety of different reasons. Yeah. But uh, we're going to talk about fishing and access and all that sort of thing today with our guest. Uh, our guest today is Mr. Willard Franklin the third, and, and Willard, I love your name because I'm I'm a third too. So I don't know about you, but in my house, when somebody said Kelly, which is my first name, every every man in the house stood up when I was a kid. So, Willard, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Willard, you you uh, and we're going to do a deep dive on this as we get on with the show, but uh, you are the man behind 
uh, 4W's fishing team and 4W's outdoors, and I want to talk about that. But I want to ask you a little bit about your past. Have you always been a, a, a fishing captain or involved with, with fishing, or what did you do early on as a young man? Um, I started fishing when I was three. Okay. When I with my dad, I was that kid that caught the piggies, and he turned them into the bigger fish. Oh, yeah. You know, redfish fishing, yeah. uh, Quintana jetties. Okay. Surfside now. And uh, uh, carried me down on his back. Sat me down with my little Zepco or a little cane pole, and I caught the, the bait fish, and he oh, turned yeah. them into big fish. Oh, yeah. Did you, uh, so you, you grew up saltwater fishing? Correct. I mean, I got my start fishing the bayous of Louisiana, so that's, uh, you know, saltwater was new to me as I got I got older and got a chance to do it, but that that's cool. So you, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot more to saltwater fishing than just, you know, dropping a line in the water. You got to know the tides, you got to know the weather conditions, especially if you own a boat and got to get out in it, so... Um, did you, have you always been a fisherman throughout your career or, or did you have start a professional career somewhere else? Well, I'm, I'm a safety professional by trade. Okay. Uh, uh, gearing up for hurricane season at hurricane, uh, planning meeting today, earlier today. Okay. But, um, always ha- took time and made time for fishing. Okay. Fishing, hunting, outdoor activities. Yeah. So I was always able to, to make time for that. Did you grow up in a big family? Uh, it was seven of us, mother, father, uh, and brothers and sisters. Okay. Five, it was five of us. It's uh, three of us yeah. now. Yeah, that, that's a handful. That's yeah. a lot of kids. Yeah. 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 You know, back when it was a single seat pickup truck. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you rode on each other's lap. Oh, or that's the day. Yeah. If you're, we talked about this before. Yeah. That's when you, you know, those days when you could crawl up in the dash <laughs> or lay in the bed. Yeah. yeah. And there was nothing wrong with it back no, then. Not and back then. And then we upgraded to a 74, 454 Dooley, uh-huh. red and white, night, you know. Yeah. So we didn't no longer have to, as we got older, didn't have to sit on each other's lap. That's good. That's good. Well, yeah, I, I had a, you know, it was just my sister and me, so we didn't really have that problem. It was more the problem of, you know, he's touching me, she's touching me, and <laughs> stop looking at her, that kind of thing. Exactly. But I, I can't imagine the dynamics with, uh, <laughs> you know, with five kids. That must have been, that must have been quite the show. Um, so totally off the subject, but you brought it up. What's the hurricane season looking like? Well, we have we need to keep our eyes open. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday is going to be probably hitting the Gulf Tuesday. Really? And it, it's leaning toward Florida. Okay. Uh, the west coast of Florida. Yeah. Um, but it can do whatever it feels like. <laughs> yeah, as it gets closer. I know. By Tuesday, we'll we'll have a better idea. Yeah, I've been watching those weather patterns, and and Ramon, I mean, you and I talked about you know. This year, this past year and a half has been, you know, what's next? Is it yeah. going to be, you know, me- meteor meteors coming down and hitting us or whatever? <laughs> I'm, and I'm hoping the trend doesn't continue and this weather pattern uh, is not so tough on us this year. But uh, I tell you what, this is, every time I open up a radar map, there's something kicking around somewhere. It's just, uh, yeah. it's crazy. And um, has that interfered? I mean, I know we haven't had heavy range yet, but has that interfered with your fishing so far this year? Uh, I'll go fishing as long as it's under 30 mile an hour. Yeah, oh, I'm going. You're in. You know, my boat can handle it. I, I know places to, to hunker down. Yeah. You know, so it may be a little bumpy or sporty getting to where I need to go. I don't make a long run, but yeah. uh, I'll go and hug a shoreline. Okay. And and go get it done. If you make a long run, what is that? How many miles it's, is that? Uh, for my, I mostly stick to the bay. Okay. You know, and gal- fishing out of Galveston, Texas City, right. you know, Patagorda. Uh, so I can stay in the intercoastal along the shorelines, Pelican Island, the ship channel. In Galveston, you know, so you can hug whichever side the wind's blowing. Sure. And uh, so, uh, although it, it could be windy, they're really gusting. Yeah. And if it's rain, I just put on rain suit. There you go. All right, folks, we are here today on Hunting Matters with Willard Franklin III of the 4W's Fishing Team. Check out their website at 4WsFishingTeam.com. That's F O U R W S FishingTeam.com. We'll be right back on the other side with Hunting Matters on KPRC 950. Have you heard about the Houston Safari Club Foundation? They're a nonprofit organization that provides annual scholarships to college students, hunting and fishing trips, and outdoor education programs for hundreds of students each year. And they fund conservation projects at home and abroad to protect habitat and wildlife. A community of hunters and people passionate about the outdoors. Monthly events an annual convention, member benefits, and so much more. Whether you hunt quail in South Texas or big game around the world, this is the place for you. Become a member today. Go to wehuntwegive.org to learn more. Wehuntwegive.org. Cross the field where the crick 
turns back by the old stump road. Good morning. Welcome back to Hunting Matters on KPRC 950. I'm your host, Joe Bitar. I'm Ramon Robles. Ramon, we are joined by Willard Franklin III, who is the, uh, he's the, I don't know if it, Willard would call you the mastermind or the <laughs> uh, the evil genius behind 4W's Fishing Team and 4W's Outdoors. Folks, go check out their website at 4wsfishingteam.com. That's F-O-U-R-W-S fishingteam.com. Willard, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, all right. I've been to the website. I've been on your social media. I've been kind of creeping around on you, checking it out, and uh you guys catch some fish now. I mean, I've I've seen some pretty impressive pictures. Yes, sir. We we specialize in bull red fish. But okay. We catch saltwater fish. Yeah. We do some freshwater, but uh, we have a Mako two thirty four with twin one fifty. So it's a big saltwater boat. Right. Uh, and the reason I got it so I can fish the bays in the bay system uh, year round. Yeah. It, with, you know, like I can say I can go out when it's thirty. Yeah. And uh, be comfortable and dry. Uh, and then run offshore snapper season, so I may have to go find my two snapper limit. Yeah, you alone might, you might have to, if, yeah, uh, so twist your arm. Yeah, so so I, now this this operation this is a this is a family uh, operation is it, it, correct. We promote the outdoors, hunting, okay. fishing. Uh, our our specialty is uh, safety, diversity, inclusion, conservation, and careers in the outdoors. So okay. we go out to schools, we have events at different organizations. Uh, working with Texas Parks and Wildlife, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and uh, they all would like for me to help promote, introduce, reintroduce more Americans to the outdoors. Right. More and, diverse Americans yeah. to the outdoors. And, and so you, your wife and your two children are also involved in this in this Cor- mission? Correct. One of the, the questions that we often get is, is what's the name four W's? I'm Willard. Yeah. Uh, my wife is Wanda. My son is Willard the fourth. Okay. Nice. And my daughter is Wendy. Okay. Very and cool. Pretty simple. Yeah, but it's a question we get all the time. You know, we have our logo church, and what the heck is the four W? So yeah, we have to explain that more than once. So who's who's got the highest catch rate among all four of you? Now let's go ahead and tell the truth. I spend more time on the water than yeah. you know. My kids are grown, so okay, I get Father's Day, birthday, mm-hmm. yep. and when they come to town, when they want to show off a friend. Okay, now before they had no choice; they had to. Sure, they, they had to go. Yeah, but as they are mature, daughter lives in Dallas. My son uh, here in town but you know they're busy working like the rest of us yeah and so I'll, I'll get a limited amount of time but when we have an event or or a uh, function we'll get them to come out and i have a, a great group of volunteers that come out to help in the schools and the communities and, yeah. and those types of things that's what it takes man i mean i you know working with houston safari club foundation if, if you don't have volunteers you you just you can't. just can't get you can only spread yourself so thin that's correct you know and i and i you know i want our listeners to know how important it is to, you, you know, you, you, you find something, you know, like Willard's Mission or Houston Safari Club Foundation or something out there that you're passionate about, raise your hand, call somebody up and volunteer because that's that's why we can do what we can do is there's only so many of us and so many hours in a day, and uh, the volunteer network and system is crucial, that's, crucial. That's correct. We can, uh, the schools have turned over the entire school to us, 1,000 kids. Wow. No way I can do it by myself. No. I make the phone call, 12 volunteers come out. Yeah, we do archery, camping, uh, water safety, fishing, five different booths, and spread them around, and and they have a great time. Do you primarily work with certain school districts, or you go wherever you're called to go? I can go wherever I'm okay. called. You know, HISD is the big one here, right? You know, so Spring, Pasadena, <clears throat> down in Galveston. Yeah, could so, you come to my house? <laughs> we I can. Call- we can schedule you? an event. Yeah, well, just, you know, it'd be me and the two boys. Oh, that's perfect. Which right. kind of equals to 1,000 kids <laughs> with, with those three. So much ignorance. <laughs> Not the ignorance. I'm just talking. I mean, listen, we raised three boys. And uh, like, like you, my kids are now spread all over the all over mm-hmm. the place. And, and but, uh, you know, you get those kids together and they, they, uh, they can kind of sometimes get unruly. But <laughs> I think you're in a fortunate position is that you're not coming and talking to them about uh, – uh, dietary safety or whatever. I mean, you know, you're walking and going, "Hey, let's talk about fishing." And and I, usually, fishing and hunting snaps those kids' heads around. They're like, "Oh, wow!" And right. especially see, seeing somebody in your capacity. I mean, we talked about it: diversity, inclusion in the outdoors. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the challenges you've had um, in this industry, uh, in this setting. And, and some of the work that you're doing to to increase the diversity out there, because I see it in the hunting area all the time, you know, and, and 
<clears throat> we are kind of an inclusive group. Look, anybody in our organization, anybody in any professional organization on the hunting side will say, well, you guys are talking, and this is a white guy saying it to another mm -hmm. white guy. Mm -hmm. You guys are talking like a bunch of old white men because mm -hmm. that's where the majority of people come from. Mm -hmm. And we do that with our own peers regardless of their background or upbringing. Ramona and I have talked about this tons of times. We call up our buddy who knows how to hunt and fish. Say, hey, man, I'm going out this weekend. Come with me. We don't invite the guy or the gal or the kids down the street that may have an interest in it but are too afraid to ask or they don't have the resources. So talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've had facing uh, uh, things in diversity in the outdoor and how you're overcoming it with your with your mission. Well, one of the things, it, and diversity in outdoors for us just happened upon me. I'm going about showcasing outdoors and parks and wildlife. say, Willard, we need to showcase more people that look like you and your family uh -huh. doing outdoor stuff. We, you know, we're a boater. We, we, uh, National Safe Boating Council. We promote water safety. Right. And you know how many people look like me promote water safety. Right. On a global scale. Sure. You know, we just did a, a big uh, seminar with them last month, uh, to 12 countries. <laughs> so, but, uh, as I moved around, you know, from Galveston to South Padre, um, fishing guides, they said, you know, we could use a bigger audience and you know in order for us to reach them we have to showcase people that look like them whatever that look is sure and, and i call it americans yeah you know, we can call it a lot of different names sure but uh we're americans right and if you're only going to showcase one group of americans right you know if you're going camping at a state park if you only see people look like you yep and you coming from the city it might not be i'm not afraid of the, the animals i might be afraid of people yeah. yeah just being honest sure no you no, know you're absolutely right and, and so we specialize in going out and showcasing we just happen to be the diverse my family our friends yeah so we have an event it's a diverse event and uh we don't have to advertise it at anything other than we have an event okay and other groups and organizations need help bringing diversity to that group or organization in order to get uh, funding and grant from different deals to help to be able to handle uh, bring in a diverse audience right and a lot of them don't know how to do it and so we we can help so how do we how that. do we do it you know we go out to schools i grew up in sunnyside okay the medium income there is twenty three thousand dollars wow okay so i'm going to sponsor a group of 10 kids duck hunting yep how much does it t cost to take one kid duck hunting if you wanted to teach them and you make twenty three thousand dollars yeah it's about for me it's about a thousand dollars a kid yep Boat, motor, trailer, shotgun, training, education, practice at, right. at the at the, the at the range, and then take them to duck hunting. Yeah, it's about a thousand for one person. Yeah, and the kid can't go by himself. No, so you have to have a mentor or parent uh, with another <laughs> shotgun, you know, waders, you know that stuff. Yeah. So what we try to do, not try to, what we do is is help introduce the kids that we reach at the school level, the ones that l would like to take it to that next level. We uh, uh, help introduce them to the real outdoors. We can showcase, you know, backyard bass, plastic fishing, uh, cushion arrows at the school, camp and showcasing that. Right. But my goal is to not just take them on a field trip, but to take them out on an adventure. And yeah. uh, so we now have access to the National Wildlife Refuge System. Yeah. <laughs> so they want us to, the U.S. government wants us to help them promote the refuge system to a yeah. diverse audience. So now before... We could we could uh, take kids to school level and to to a small park or an area, but now I have access to you know around the country. Yeah, and so that that's big deal. We've got the resources. We should use them. We should promote them. And you guys are doing that uh, through four Ws. And you're right. Going back to something you said earlier, <clears throat> I think it's human nature where people they look at role models, no matter what area it's in they look at the population that's in that area and they they say well I, I see people that have similar likes or or from similar backgrounds i feel comfortable there and then we, we and when they don't they shy away from it and we we have to do a better job no matter what area we're recru recruiting people to come to we got to do a better job recruiting people to the outdoors no matter what the background is and i want to talk about that in, uh, in our next segment talk about the r3 movement in this country so folks we're here with willard franklin III today on Honey Matters on KPRC 950. We'll be right back after the break. Good 
Good morning. Welcome back to Hunting Matters on KPRC 950. I'm your host, Joe Vitar. I am Ramon Robles. And we're here today with Willard Franklin III of the 4W's fishing team. Willard, have you ever had a fish on the line and you thought, oh, crap? Well, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I was fishing offshore alone, Mm -hmm. and uh, my rod went off trolling. Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas podcast, now available on the iHeartRadio app. One of the funniest stories that I ever heard has to do with Dr. Denton Cooley, one of the great heart surgeons of all time. He and Dr. DeBakey were not friends. They were enemies, and they were both in Houston. Cooley was uh, involved as a witness in a lawsuit. The lawyer asked him, said, Dr. Cooley, uh, a lot of people say that you say that you're the best uh, best heart surgeon in the world by far. He said, yes, sir, I say that. And he said, well, are you saying that now? He said, yes, I'm, I'm saying I'm the best heart surgeon in the world. He said, isn't that a little braggadocious? And Dr. Cooley said, uh, yes, but I'm under oath. <laughs> Quick-witted stories from West Texas to the White House. Kent Hans, the best storyteller in Texas podcast. Now on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you download your podcast. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. When you need auto parts, O'ReillyAuto.com is just a few clicks away. We offer convenient options for you to get your parts quickly. Order online and pick up for free at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store. We'll even bring it out curbside. Or you can have your parts delivered right to your door with free shipping on most orders over $35. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. And I had a kingfish. So I stopped the boat and trolling four lines, stopped the boat, got the you know, four foot kingfish in. Good deal by myself. Yeah. But when I went to get my second rod, you know, all my lures went down. And when I went to reel it in, it took off. And when oh. I say it took off, it took off. It ended up being a uh hit a, a red and white Rapala on the drop. Yeah. Uh seven foot uh black tip shark. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alone. And you're by yourself. By myself. <laughs> yeah. On the boat. <laughs> So what do you do? So the two stories. Um, my first time catching a six-foot shark alone by myself on the boat. I need more friends. Um, <laughs> Ramon and I will come out yeah, with I you know, anytime I need help. you want. I need help. But <laughs> I thought I was tougher than I was. Yeah. And when I went to gaff that shark, I gaffed it too far back, and it, and it got its head down on me. Oh. And it almost pulled me out of the boat. I Jeez. held on with like one or two fingers. And uh, things you never do but one time. Yeah. Hmm. And I had the, the gaff tied to my wrist <laughs> not good <laughs> but the, the the rope the the, the tie broke and the gaff swam off uh boat still attached rod and rod holder so i was able to get them back in but that was 30 years ago but now i've learned take a lasso with me if i'm gonna go big shark hunting i can yeah. lasso the shark and get the hook out and or, or not cut the line but i can lasso it with a lasso right. actual i went to the the cowboy store and bought mm-hmm. an actual lasso nice and uh because I used to use my 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 um, boat rope, but it's it's just too flimsy. Yeah, and and I'm not a, a cowboy at that level, but I learned those ropes make a circle because it stays in a circle. Yep, I didn't know that. Yeah, when I learned that, like hmm, so hmm. I, I put it under the butt of the rod, fill it down, and then walk the shark in it, tighten up. But I tied a rope to the boat first. That, like I said, I'm, I'm not may not look that smart, but I learned my lesson that yeah, that's, years. That's years scary ago. though. When you I got, almost went away with that shark. Yeah, that's you know? scary when you got something that big that's mm-hmm. got control of uh, you know your next move. Mm-hmm. That's, that's and that's what I, I've learned to have both hands, rod and the rod holder, rope tied to the boat, and now I have two hands to help finagle the shark. And and when he takes off, he can only go fifteen or twelve feet. Right. And then he tows the boat a little bit. Then you can can work him better. You know. so, so how does that conversation go when you get home? <laughs> Honey, how was your day she, fishing? She, she doesn't like it. You know, and I, and I have my GoPro filming it all, so she oh, gets to watch it over. Me. and all, Oh, my goodness. So, But, uh, you know, over the years, I've been doing this for well over 50 years, so I've learned learned a lot. But I learned to only make that mistake one time. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, I, I always wear my life jacket. If I'm by myself, it never comes off. You know, it's just too dangerous. I, yeah. And I understand that. Yeah. And uh, trolling, you know, a big fish or you get tangled in a, something can Go bad. Ramon, you ever had a moment like that? No, never like that. <laughs> I don't like fishing for things that could eat me. They can, definitely can. <laughs> oh, man. 
Oh, yeah, you you especially you know when you're I've, I've done that on the hunting side. You know sometimes you get yourself in a situation like this is not safe. This is not cool. Mm-hmm. And it, like you said, it only takes one time for you to mm-hmm. to uh, to uh, not repeat that mistake. So I can't imagine being you know jerked in the water by a shark <laughs> when you can't get oh, can't oh, get that gaff off your hand. Oh my goodness, terrible. Not good. Not good at all. Um, switching gears just a little bit. Uh, do you guys fish competitively? We fished uh, the All Drillers Tournament out of the Yacht Basin yeah. last month, okay. uh, four guys, and uh, won first place in the sheephead. Oh, wow. You know, so it was, it was a pretty competitive, 500 yeah. for, for mm-hmm. them, uh, $1,000 for a sheephead. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I told them, I said, look, guys, we can't always catch a rich. That's what I specialize in, but yeah. they just weren't there. Right. Not for us anyway. But we, we ended up winning first place for sheephead. And your operation, uh, your operation runs. Uh, you run charters as well. I'm I'm not a charter. That's what confuses people. Yeah. I'm not a charter. I promote the outdoors. So what we do is use that boat to introduce more people to fishing. So okay. with that being said, I have a select group of pro staff and then friends, and I ed- use it as an educating tool. So, okay. So I'll, I'll take out veterans, for example. I took right. out a group of veterans from uh, precinct two, uh, went female veterans, you know out. Yeah. Or I'll pick a family. I need to do a segment on life jacket safety. So I'll have a, a family. You know, I'm diversity. I always try to, you know, they like, well, hey, sure. Willard invited me fishing. <laughs> and I do. But some people I invite for a reason because I have a particular segment to do. And so if we're doing water safety, we showcase, in a, you know, a young kid or a medium kid. My kids are grown. Sure. You know, so it's not about me being in front of the camera, about showcasing Americans. Right. And that's what I, we really try to do. So we get a, a good kid that speaks well. That's cute. You know, you can't yeah. beat a kid that that's real oh, no. animated, yeah. talking about fishing and, and, and you know, the hand gestures and stuff. Yep. That just makes all the difference. And getting people's attention, because this is uh, Fourth of July weekend. Yep. People, we're going to lose souls mm. this weekend yep. across Texas. That's serious. Despite all the warnings of Parks and Wildlife and everybody puts out, you know, it's all over the place. It's, it's We're going to lose people this weekend. Yeah. You know, and in saltwater, you'll lose the kid. The dad or uncle and one other person is trying yeah. to go and get them. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, most of the time it's more than one. And then in freshwater. But uh, I work with the Parks and Wildlife, uh, water safety. I do water safety Wednesdays. We showcase our life jackets. And and it's for me, it's, it's not versus, hey, this is my life jacket. You wear it. We're going to show you my life jacket holding up one of my big fish. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. th- you know, so that you're looking at the fish, but you see that life jacket. And we get calls, like, hey, Willard. What type of life jacket? I wear Mustang Elite life jackets, the 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 uh, the the ones that expand. Yeah, and uh, they're comfortable. You, it's a hundred degrees. Sure. You can wear them. You know, you're just not gonna wear those big orange ones. Right. You know, and I can't make people wear them all day. But those you put them on, you forget they're on. Yeah. And and if you need them, they're ready to go. Well, it, it's it's you know, water safety and boating safety is so crucial especially during the holidays when you get more people in the water you get a lot more there's a lot of more opportunities for accidents and boating accidents and and, you know let's just let's just call it what it is there's a lot of drinking going on that shouldn't be and things like that happen sometimes on the water and Mm -hmm. you know willard makes a great point and, and we can't stress enough folks be safe be smart and be safe and to go get a life jacket which you get pulled over, you're breaking the law. If the game warden pulls you over, you don't have them. They're so inexpensive, really. And there's so many. And like when I was a kid, we had the big orange mm-hmm. ones that you look, you know, the life jacket was bigger than, than the human being. You look, mm-hmm. yeah, you couldn't put your arms down like in Christmas story. Mm-hmm. They're like, I can't put my arms down. Well, those days have changed. I mean, they've streamlined these things mm-hmm. and, and the price has come down. I mean, you can spend as much money as you want on them. But, folks, it makes no sense not to have a life jacket on if you're on the water. I mean, it's just save a life spend a few bucks which uh, the trade-off is just not there so i think it's admirable and you and you're right you guys constantly you know every week you're on there doing promoting a a safety safety message so uh, i think that's you need to do it people forget about it you you forget about it and and i if i never know i reached a person i've done a great job yep you know right if they came home that's great that's right and every week i watch the news and we lose someone yep. in the water. If even if you at the beach, bring a throw cushion, a twelve dollars and fifty cent tie a rope on it. Right, take it with you, yep. and you can. But if you, you can save somebody else's kid, or besides your own. A exactly. throw cushion is twelve dollars at any sporting goods store. Yep. Twelve bucks. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a good point. You you just 
it's one of those things you kind of take for granted until you need it. So just go ahead and have it, you mm-hmm. know, just to be safe. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, you don't go out with your tackle box and not have any baits in it, a variety of different That's baits correct. in it. So you don't go out in the boat and not have a life jacket. Mm-hmm. So I was just looking at the uh, Mustang Elite that uh, Willer was just talking about. That's fantastic. Pretty slick, aren't they? What a mm-hmm. fantastic life vest! That's that's a great one. Of our sponsor there. You know, if I call them, say, "Hey, we're going to do we, we're doing duck hunting for ten youth." Yeah, <clears throat> we're going to be in a boat. Yeah, we're going to be in shallow water, three, four feet, but it may be a five or ten foot. We may have to walk out and go get a duck. Sure, we will have to walk out and get <laughs> yeah. a duck. But they're going to all have on a life jacket. Yeah. And, and these life jackets, uh, the ones I got Mustang, are camo, which we need, and they are. Uh, not auto, they self inflatable. So you you have to pull the cord. So we're not running it fast in a big boat, boat ten mile, ten horsepower. Sure, just m- moving along. And if and if you fall or or get into too deep water, you just pull the cord, and it'll expand. Just like the ones on a plane. Just like it's like an airbag. Yeah, people probably don't know how to, those thin ones. That's not part of. They would blow up. Right, like an airbag, just like in your mm-hmm. car airplane. That's cool. And Ramon, you can actually wear that with your tuxedo. Yeah, you know? so. fantastic. They look good. They, they, <laughs> they look good. Law enforcement, military, Air Force, that's what they were. They're pretty slick. So I was going to ask you this later, but let's go and talk about it now. It costs <coughs> you about 1000 bucks a kid to take them on a duck hunt. Look, mm-hmm. we, you know, Houston Safari Club does these uh, youth hunting and fishing education trips. We take a lot of kids who have never been outdoors before. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. How can people who are listening to this show – support your mission and what you guys are doing they go to the website facebook they contact you how they how do they well, help well we actually are a nonprofit. Okay. Uh, so we're not used to trip getting you know sponsorships yeah. but we are now people calling me willard i want to support you right so um w- you can reach out to me directly and then w- you know we have uh, a nonprofit so we can get take donations from there and i'll set right. it up on the website to where we can actually get them right so that's where we are now people like willard we would like to support what you're doing sure you know so um with the duck hunting we don't we're sponsoring 10 kids but with our support we may get up to 15 or 20 you cool. know so we have we're going to hunt at the trinity river national wildlife refuge okay and then we have opportunity to hunt at other refuges man that's awesome Any, anybody who's got a servant's heart that wants to do that take the, take these kids out or young adults or whomever just invite them to go out in the outdoors and folks support this go go to four w's fishing team that's four f-o-u-r w-s fishing team.com and learn about willard franklin the four w's fishing team of four w's outdoors we're going to finish up on the other side taking a break now on hunting matters on kprc 950 Welcome back to Honey Matters on KPRC 950. Ramon, I guess that is the only rock and roll song that features a fish as the main subject. I think so. I'm I can't think, think of another one. Yeah. Well, there needs to be more fish rock and roll, don't you I think? I agree. Willer, what do you think? I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a shortage of songs about uh, country music songs about fishing, that's for sure. Folks, thank you for joining us on Honey Matters on KPRC 950 today. We're here with Willard Franklin. Willard is uh, the master behind the 4W's fishing team and 4W's outdoors. And Willard, we were talking a couple of segments ago about uh, it's a mouthful, recruitment, retention, and reactivation are what R3. Most, of, most of us in the industry know is the R3 efforts. So let's talk a little bit about that and how you're involved with that. Well, uh, like I said, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife reached out to me and and, and asked for us to help them uh, bring in more, pe- more diverse uh, Americans to the outdoors with the R3 program, you know, hunting, shooting, and fishing. You know, most people know us for fishing, but we are we can shoot oh, and yeah. we, we hunt. Uh, so we're working right now to help introduce more Americans, you know, for the shooting sport, for example. Right. More people are buying guns than ever. Yeah, we, The law's changing, you, you know. Yeah, I saw, a, I saw a report today that uh, for the first time ever, a U.S. gun manufacturer made a billion dollars a year. I saw that year. as well. Yep. Yeah, wow. I did. So... With us and being a safety oriented business, gun safety is real important. Right. People will are buying guns without and they're sitting under their pillow. You know, each year you hear you know, a three year old shot their baby brother. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and then it was another one where a guy murdered a guy robbing him and his three year old shot his br- himself with that gun and they arrested it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how they found out. Yeah. So People are buying guns and not securing them from their kids. That's mm-hmm. a huge deal for us. So, you know, buying a gun, securing the gun, and practicing gun safety. 
is is a big deal. Yeah, you know. So from there, you know, the introducing people to hunting, just like we're we're doing with the uh, our duck hunting at the refuge. We're going to be uh, deer hunting. We have uh, some property up in in Centerville, two hundred forty so acres mm-hmm. deer hunting, um, and then uh, uh, re- fishing is what we do. So we have an opportunity to take groups of five or six to introduce them to some saltwater fishing. And then we'll fish fish along the refuge. And then with our new uh, duck boat, we'll be able to do some different things in a shallow draft boat than I can't do in that, sure. that big Mako. Yeah. Yeah, and, and folks, if you're listening, for those of you who don't know, the R3 effort, again, is re- re- retent- recruitment, retention, and reactivation, recruiting new people in the outdoors, keeping them involved in the outdoors. Because, you know, I listen, I've done enough youth hunting and fishing trips to know that the unfortunate the unfortunate truth about that sometimes you take a kid hunting and fishing a couple of times and they may go home or they may not do it again for several years and then they're lost in it. So we need to, we need to do as a country, as outdoors people do a better job of not only introducing them to them, but keeping them involved. And then the reactivation is those kids who hunted fish, go to college, go off and start their careers and they, they forget about it. And they're like, you know, you're, you're kind of like, come on back, come, come back and join us in the outdoors. So it's a, it's a huge effort. And you guys are obviously out there, uh, walk in the walk every single day. Um, and, you know, to, to the point earlier, I mean, I pulled up some stats today. There's uh, about a, almost 12 billion Americans hunt, hunt in the U.S. It's estimated that about 11% of the white population hunts, but fewer than 2% of hunters are African-American, Asian, or Hispanic. And on the fishing side, um, 80% are white, 20% are African-American, Asian, Hispanic. So we've got a little, uh, we've got a little work to do there. And, and, and look, we got to get everybody we can. I mean, the great thing about the pandemic was more people bought hunting and fishing licenses and bought guns and got involved in the outdoors mm-hmm. than ever before because they're like, well, I can't just sit inside month after month. Mm-hmm. i got to go do something. And, and you know, I tell people all the time, go buy access to a state park if you don't hunt or fish. Mm-hmm. Go buy a hunting or fishing license even if you never use it. You know, it supports these programs, the things you guys are doing, Fish and Wildlife and, mm-hmm. and Texas Parks and Wildlife. And, um it's just critically important. Right. As an outdoor guy with the pandemic hit, you know, we run up to the store, get some lunch meat and stuff for our fishing event right. it, trip. And it was no meat in the store. No. It, everything was gone. But our freezer had fresh redfish, flounder, yep. neil guy, yep. you know, hog. Oh, yeah. So we were good. And and if I needed more, I can go get more. You couldn't get more at the store. And, and if you, the, the, 80, 98 or 94 percent of Americans that don't know anything other than going to the grocery store, you're concerned yeah. when a, a pandemic, which we just went through, right? Uh, we we wasn't concerned with with the food aspect of it. We weren't either. You know, toilet paper like everybody else. Oh yeah. But with the meat, we we did not have an issue, and we can go get more meat every weekend. Yeah. That yeah. that was not an issue. Yeah. We, not many people can do that. No, and that's unfortunate. And you know, I, I think some of those people that started going outdoors were like. You know, some some of them watch these not documentaries on Netflix and they see factory farming that sort of thing, and it and it kind of freaks them out. And they're like, I think we're seeing more and more young adults kind of say, you know what, I want to go out and harvest my own protein, whether it's on the waters or mm-hmm. in the woods. Um, that's that's been a big a big push this past year, and I, I, we're the same way. My, you know, my wife says, well. Uh, there, there were no steaks or no pork chops this week. I'm like, you know what? We got steaks and pork chops. Exactly. There's access out there. there and there's, there's uh, uh, you know, halibut we caught last year in Alaska, whatever. So I'm we coming over. Yeah, we're like you. We didn't have that problem. <laughs> we did not have that problem. You know, and I, listen, I always keep boot in stockpiles. Yeah. So, oh, my goodness. I mean, I can't, you know, that's, yeah. I, I think probably at least 4% of my blood content is made out of boudin <laughs> growing up in Louisiana. So we always, if we run out of boudin at the Bitar house, the apocalypse, the apocalypse that's is the, coming. The, yeah, we have a big not, issue. Not a good thing. So, um. All right, folks. Will, we usually like to finish up with a couple of uh, trivia questions for our guests or kind of some to, – to, Ramon's in there. He's got a computer program. He's doing a psychological profile on you. So I'm going to ask you some questions a little bit. Um, if you had one superpower, what, what would it be? It's to be able to see the future, Ooh, what's going nice. on. You know, in, in, in my profession, we, we look at history, yep. what happened in order for me to adjust our training and topics and stuff. Right, but to to see what's going to happen in the future, yeah, pretty much what I do for in 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 uh, you know analytical stuff. And, and I mean, I'm Detail. not blowing smoke here, but you're kind of changing the future every day with what you're doing. It it slowly making a difference. You know, we like I said, we started in Houston, started at the schools, right? Just doing what we did. Yeah. And everywhere I went, they said we need help in diversity. We're working with the United States government. Yeah. The leader, the directors, right, 
of law enforcement. Willard, we need help. Yeah. You know, just give you some stats. In the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, at the 220 federal law enforcement officers, we, we think of them as game wards, right. federal game wards. For a question for you, how many black women are in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife law oh, enforcement? Less than 1%. Zero. None. Wow. wow. How about that? Mm. And how many you think look like me? Very few. <laughs> Very few. So what are we going to do? Six? So I'm helping yeah. to change that. Yeah. They asked me to help them. They realized they have that issue. Okay. So they, they we met this week and said, hey, Willard, we would like for you to help us. We've been doing it this way. Yeah. And it hadn't changed. So do you think, you know, I mean, you're you're coming into young people's lives on a daily basis. Hopefully, do you do you think that, you know, the, the touch point of taking them fishing and hunting, get them interested outdoors, and then you go, then you have the opportunity to expose them. You know what, guys? You can make a living in the Correct. outdoors, and here's how you can do it. We we mentor outdoor people. We have a young man, Jane White. Okay. We, we've been interning him to become a Texas game warden since he – Went to Prairie View, met him as a freshman. He came up to us, okay. Parks and Wildlife in, in, uh, introduced us to us. Say, Jaden would like to become a Texas game warden. Generally, you'll see him one time, but for us, I took him fishing, hunting, camping, right, <laughs> boating. You know, a young kid don't know how to hook a trailer no. to a truck. They don't. Most There's adults, no most adults, most, don't. most grown ups can't yeah. either. Uh, so he can do. And four years later, he can do all that now. So he'll have a better shot when he goes to apply. Yeah than he would coming from his lifestyle man that's that's so cool that's so cool so willard thank you so much for joining us today folks we've been talking to willard franklin the third of the four w's fishing team and the nonprofit four w's outdoors go check them out on their website at four w's fishing team.com that's f-o-u-r-w-s fishing team.com support what they're doing out there and uh you know let's get more people outdoors folks willard thanks so much for joining us Thanks for having me. All right, folks, we'll see you next week on Honey Matters on KPRC 950. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. When you need auto parts, O'ReillyAuto.com is just a few clicks away. We offer convenient options for you to get your parts quickly. Order online and pick up for free at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store. We'll even bring it out curbside. Or you can have your parts delivered right to your door with free shipping on most orders over $35. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts.